are invited to use them. Answers that are equivocal will be scored as a no. Candidates for each district will be called in alphabetical order. I will read the first set of questions, Ms. Garcia will read the second set, and I will read the third set. And before we read the questions quickly, we're going to ask the candidates for District 3 to approach the mic to be ready to report their answers. And then we're going to ask the candidates for District 8 to line up behind District 3 candidates, and then the candidates for District 9 behind as well, and follow suit with the mail. And we'll do this three times in a cycle of flow. as well as with one. <laughs> District 1 candidates, please give your yes or no responses. And I will now read the questions in regard to living wage. The city living wage is currently $15 an hour. On May 15, 2015, the city's living wage stakeholder group recommended that the council increase the city living wage <laughs> to 1683 by 2020. Will you commit to voting to increase the city living wage to 1683 by 2020? This applies to all city workers, workers paid by city contracts, and private companies receiving public subsidies and incentives. Capital idea. Currently, the city invests 2.4 million in long-term job training programs like capital idea, defined as training that lifts people out of poverty, leads to a two-year degree, and a starting wage of at least $20 an hour, 20% of poverty for a family of three. Would you vote to increase funding for long-term job training for living wage jobs to $2.5 million and ensure that this funding is ongoing rather than one-time funding. Education. Will you vote to continue with at least level funding the city's investment in prime time after school program at $950,000 and the parent support specialist program at $1 million? Mr. Harding. Yes to all three. Thank you. This is, this is, yes. as, as someone who came to Austin with one hundred twenty dollars and eight cents, I know that every penny matters, and we should be seeking to increase that minimum wage. When you take a look at the level of people in poverty in District One, twenty-five percent. A big aspect of my platform is job education and job training. With a third of our minority children growing up in poverty and their parents may be working two to three jobs, we need to make sure that we are helping to provide after school programs. So thank you for your service. Thank you. And just a brief comment, as a son of a minister, and I guess you 
look at all these questions, and I have done work in a number of different areas, but it's always, it's, it's difficult because of the, the constraint on financial budgets. But after praying and reminding myself of the son of a minister, that it came to the conclusion that is yes to all three, and thank you for the hard work that Austin and her did. Thank you. Yes, yes, and yes. Thank you. All of the these programs have been um, uh, programs that I've actually had the honor of working with Austin Faith uh, over the years doing the budgeting process, and I will make sure that Austin Air Faith is one of my first calls every single time with the uh, budget. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, the mayoral candidates, Mr. Adler and Ms. Morrison. 